The subject of this video relates to the procedure of sample injection into the PicoSpin 45 NMR spectrometer. A written description of the information contained in this video can be found in the System Operations section of the PicoSpin 45 User Manual under the heading titled Sample Handling and in the documentation accompanying the classroom and laboratory accessory kits. These documents are located under the documentation section of the support page of our website at www.picospin.com. Both HTML and PDF versions of the documentation are available. In this video, we'll look at the general procedure for injecting liquid samples using accessories from the classroom accessory kit for 16th inch fittings and the laboratory accessory kit for 16th inch fittings. The procedure for sample transfer is similar for cartridges with 32nd inch fittings, except that a filled tube assembly is required. So how can you tell if your cartridge is a 16th inch or a 32nd inch fitting? Cartridges with 32nd inch fittings have an additional reducing extension on the bulkhead unit, whereas cartridges with 16th inch fittings do not. The first thing we need to do is attach the drain tube assembly. We'll remove the plug in the outlet fitting and screw in the drain tube until finger tight. I like to orient the drain tube sideways so the tubing can sit on the rim of the waste collection bottle. This will allow us to observe liquid droplet formation at the exit as we inject our sample. Let's remove the plug on the inlet fitting and replace it with an inline filter. It is advised that samples be pre-filtered to remove particulates. The inline filter contains a 2 micron stainless steel mesh that can be used as additional filtering of particulates from your sample. And while filtering of samples is not always needed, this finger tight inline filter is easily installed and removed as needed. Now, let's assemble our injection system from parts found in the classroom accessory kit. The parts I'm using are a disposable 1 mL polypropylene slip tip syringe, a disposable inch and a half long blunt tip 22 gauge needle, and a syringe port. When connecting the syringe and needle, make sure you firmly seat the syringe into the lure connector of the needle and then slip on the syringe port. I usually slip on the syringe port before drawing up a sample, but you can slip it on after your sample has been drawn up into the syringe. Your approach will depend on the nature of the sample and sample container. Now let's draw up some sample. I'm going to withdraw approximately 0.2 milliliters. The relatively large dead volume of the disposable syringe needle configuration results in air bubble formation behind the liquid. We'll need to take care to avoid injecting the air bubble into the cartridge. If this happens, just flush more sample through the cartridge. Keep in mind you're injecting a sample from a relatively large bore syringe barrel into a small bore 22 gauge needle and that trying to inject too quickly can build up pressure at the syringe needle connection, thus rupturing the connection. When injecting, steadily apply light pressure to the plunger. If it seems too much pressure is being applied, then perhaps a constriction is present somewhere along the sample flow path, or the sample is viscous and liquid flow is slow. This is best monitored at the exit of the drain tube. Now we attach the syringe to the inlet fitting of the capillary cartridge by inserting the needle into the inline filter until we reach a hard stop. Or, if you're not using an inline filter, insert the needle directly into the inlet fitting until you reach a hard stop and then tighten the syringe port firmly so that the needle doesn't slip out of the syringe port. This will prevent leakage as you inject your sample. As I inject the sample, I'll use my index and middle finger to position the drain tube so I can better observe what's happening at the outlet. As I inject the sample, I'll hold the needle's lure connector between my thumb and index finger so I can control and prevent rupturing the syringe needle connection. This can happen if one tries to inject the sample too quickly or when the sample is too viscous, thus overpressurizing the syringe. I'm looking for a continuous stream of liquid passing through the tubing and nice droplet formation at the exit of the drain tube. If I notice air bubbles in the flow path, I'll inject more sample until the air bubbles have been purged. To completely displace the sample resident in the cartridge, one needs to inject approximately 25 microliters of sample. This amounts to approximately three to four droplets being formed at the exit of the drain tube. You can inject as much sample as you like, so long as at least three to four droplets have been formed. I'll follow this up by capping the inlet fitting to minimize thermal motion and reduce sample loss due to evaporation, and then conduct the experiment. Often, I leave the drain tube in place, but if my solvent or sample is volatile, or if I'm performing a long experiment, then I'll cap the outlet fitting as well. You can follow the same procedure of sample injection using an HPLC gas-tight syringe. 
You would consider switching to a gas tight syringe for analytical work or when only a small volume of sample is available. I'm using a Hamilton 1710 RN 100 microliter gas tight syringe fitted with an inch and a half long small hub 22 gauge blunt tip needle. These parts can be found in the laboratory accessory kit. Since I'm using a 100 microliter syringe, I'll withdraw approximately 40 to 50 microliters of sample. The dead volume of a gas tight syringe is considerably smaller, and so the air bubble behind the liquid will be much smaller. This air bubble can be eliminated nearly completely by carefully withdrawing sample. To completely displace the sample resident in the cartridge, one needs to inject approximately 25 microliters of sample. This amounts to approximately three to four droplets being formed at the exit of the drain tube. You can inject as much sample as you like, so long as at least three to four droplets have been formed. Like before, insert the needle into the inlet fitting until it reaches a full stop, and then tighten the syringe port. And then, monitor the drain tube for air bubbles and droplet formation as you inject your sample. We should then cap the inlet fitting and perform our experiment. There is one more sample injection configuration we can consider, and that's when we need additional sample filtration prior to injection. In addition to the inline filter, we can introduce a syringe filter. Since syringe filters typically provide 0.22 or 0.45 micron filtering, one has the option to remove the inline filter. The syringe port will attach just as easily to the inlet fitting without the inline filter present. I'm going to leave my inlet filter in place. The syringe filter I'm using is a 0.22 micron PTFE filter encased in a polypropylene body. This configuration is fairly chemically robust, but you should choose the syringe filter best suited for your chemistry. Draw up a sample like before, but include a little more volume, approximately 0.3 to 0.4 milliliters, to account for the additional dead volume introduced by the syringe filter. Attach the syringe just as before, inject the sample, cap the inlet, and perform the experiment. When finished with experiments for the day, we want to clean the cartridge by purging the last sample with an appropriate solvent, and finally with water, so that in the morning the unit is ready for shimming. We can remove or leave attached the inline filter and cap the inlet fitting. Finally, seal the waste bottle, remove the drain tube, and cap the outlet fitting. In this video, we explored the procedure for sample injection using classroom and laboratory kit accessories. Remember, there is a written description of the information contained in this video in the System Operation section of the PicoSpin 45 User Manual under the heading titled Sample Handling, and in the documentation accompanying the Classroom and Laboratory Accessory Kits. These documents are located under the Documentation section of the support page of our website at www.picospin.com. Both HTML and PDF versions of the documentation are available.